Hey, what's up guys? Nate here from Protoculture. Welcome back to another Sonic Academy video. Today we are checking out a brand new Arturia plugin. It's called Cold Fire and it's a pretty extensive suite of distortion tools. Uh, it's a modern distortion unit. Uh, really, really cool plugin. Uh, before we get started, we've just released a brand new series on understanding distortion uh, at Sonic Academy. If you want to go check that out to kind of learn a little bit more about what distortion really is, how it works, how harmonics are generated in distorted signals all that kind of stuff there's a bunch of really cool theory so you really understand the workings behind uh, using distortion as a tool as well as some practical examples on how to apply distortion in mixes so do go check that out if you are interested otherwise let's dive into cold fire and take a look Right, so you may remember that recently Arturia released two uh, distortion plugins with their V Collection 3. Um, this is the third in that set of distortion plugins, whereas the other two are analog modeled ones, uh, Tube Fire, etc. Uh, this is a more modern take, very much in the same vein as EFX Fragments, which we looked at here on the channel as well quite recently. Uh, EFX Fragments being the sort of extension of the modulation stuff, doing all sorts of cool granular stuff. Uh, this one is very much the same plugin format. Uh, a lot of the controls and stuff will look fairly familiar here, uh, but obviously they're more modern take on distortion. Let's just take a listen to how this sound. It has quite a wide range of sounds you can get out of this, everything from sort of very typical distortion right down to very animated, quite weird sounding effects as well. Uh, even delays and modulation kind of stuff that you can do with this. Uh, I've just got a little synth loop from Anna playing and some drums that we can just check out some of the sounds. We'll just go into the distortion section first and take a listen to what we have. <laughs> Let's jump into the faulty section as well, take a listen to the more animated stuff. <laughs> And just for reference, that's the dry sound. Cool, so quite a lot going on there. We're gonna dive into the actual interface now and take a look at everything that is on offer here. First thing we're gonna do is open up the advanced tab over here. Uh, so we can see everything that's going on. We'll just reset this preset as well. And let's take a look at the inner workings of this. So basically you have two distortion units uh, that can be applied in a number of different ways. Uh, your distortion A and B. Each of these has a pre-filter section. If we move the mix over this side, we'll be using just A. Uh, we can play back some audio in here. We can filter this. using a number of different filter types. Everything down to cone filters. We have a post filter as well, which is applied after the distortion is applied. Uh, each one of the distortions have their own dry wet um, uh, knobs over here, as well as all the controls for whichever distortion algorithm you are using. And then you also have a master dry wet down here too. We'll take a look at this in just a second. Uh, there are a ton of different um, algorithms on hand for you to play around with. Everything from very digital right through to sort of more analog sounding distortion. We've got bit inverter here. Some nice crunchy digital sounds. We've got the bit crusher, which you just heard. Quite a nice representation on the graphic here as well, showing you what's going on. We've got a wave folder. Some of these have subcategories in your two, so you can actually apply different kinds of wave folding. Uh, we'll go default, dual fold. Mm -hmm. 
So loads of uh, different tones that you can get there. Uh, we've got a rectifier. Wave shaper. With a whole bunch of different wave shapes that you can do. Transformers. Again, between iron and nickel. These are nice, way more subtle, these, uh, just for adding a bit of warmth, I guess. Force is a overdrive unit, but again with some subcategories in here as well, even odd harmonics that can be generated. Next up we have tape, self-explanatory, tape distortion. We also have tube distortion. Germanium, switch between aux and mic, and then a transistor distortion should give you that nice sort of fuzz pedal kind of vibe. Cool, so that's the range of distortion algorithms that you have on hand. Uh, they both feed into this master section. A really nice little feature here is the uh, link that you can actually drive your distortion harder from the input, but uh, compensate for it at the output automatically when that is linked. Uh, you've got a color dial here, which is a sort of global tilt filter, basically, which favors sort of more low frequency content or high frequency content. And yeah, it's sort of low standing out in there bass getting a bit more weighted there. You've got a global dry wet. Uh, this can be locked between different uh, presets as well. If you want to do some preset diving, you can lock your dry wet and it will stay that way regardless of the preset that you select. Coming down to this section, we looked at blending from this one. So we've got that one solid currently. If you blend this back, you'll see you get this nice visual representation of how much of this one is in the signal now too. Um, we've got quite a complex uh, routing system here, which is really great. Um, if you click on this parallel section here, you'll see currently we're in parallel mode, which means that you can kind of uh, blend these two algorithms together. Uh, the dry signal is going into the beginning of each one of those. We can also run these in serial, for example. Uh, we can flip the routing around, so A becomes B and vice versa. Then we have some more interesting ones down at the bottom here. We've got a stereo mode, which will uh, allow us to apply distortion to both the left and right channel, but separately. We play this back. And again, we can flip those. Uh, you can also do this in uh, mid-side mode, which is a really nice addition. So this is our mids. That's our sides. Again, let's flip these around. Distort just the sides. So you can get some nice sort of stereo widening effects of this. Uh, these um, routings also work without any of the distortions enabled. So if we turn these off, we can essentially use this as sort of a mid-side mixer as well. Um, if we hit start here, we can just solo the sides or solo the mids. Some really nice utility in there as well. Uh, if we go uh, further down, we've got a band split feature as well. Now this changes the mixer dial down at the bottom to a frequency dial. So now we can decide to maybe just drive, uh, let's grab the wave shaper again. We can decide to just drive the tops. Just add a little bit of fizz on those, or let's say for instance, if we wanted to just adjust the lows, maybe add some drive to that kick. We can do that with the frequency splitter, yeah. So multiband distortion as well, really nice addition. Coming down, uh, we've also got a compressor stage, uh, which is a great little addition to this as well, uh, and also very flexible. We've got a compressor built in here. So note that you can put this pre or post as well. So you could be compressing your signal before it goes into the distortion algorithms or afterwards at the, the sort of output of the whole plugin. Uh, we've got a compressor, and let's just play that back again. 
just a makeup again. Time. We've also got a multi band, which has a very kind of OTT vibe to it. And you can see there's a preset here for OTT, bass control, high control, a bunch of different the tightener works really nicely as well. A bit of gating going on there, and you can adjust the time and the tone. Lastly, there's a limiter, which functions just the way that you think it would. And the limiter is great to just have on the output as well for when you're doing sort of more extreme distortion settings just to control all those levels. Uh, we've also got a feedback section here, which gives you some really interesting effects as well. You can decide either feedback from A, B, or both. We'll just enable this and let's bring in the drums again. And we can feedback from B. We've got a time and a filter color for this as well. Let's feed this back. So notice how the feedback's affected by how much drive you've got in there. If we take the drive all the way down, get some nice tinny delay effects. We can bring this down. And this can be synced. So you get some delay effects now. We can also unsync this. And we can lock this to pitch too. So you can get some tonal sequences in there once you get into the modulation side of things too. Uh, so yeah, really, really cool comprehensive set of features here and we haven't even touched the modulation yet. So let's get into the modulation. We'll take a look at that as well. So if you have pigments or have used EFX fragments or seen that, you'll be familiar with this. It's very similar. Uh, you, you can set any of these modulation sources here to any of these. You've got the LFO function generator, follower and a sequencer. To show this off, let's grab a sequencer, for example, because we are going to automate the pitch that we have here. So let's go and just click Assign. We can bring that up and then uh, assign a sequence to the pitch of our feedback. And we'll just dial in some random numbers there. Uh, let's sync our sequencer to 16 and take a listen to what we get. Let me bring this down. Getting some interesting stuff going on there. We've also got an envelope follower, so let's stick that on. We can bring that in from a side chain or from the audio input that we are currently affecting, in this case, the drums. We'll leave it there and let's assign this maybe to our pre filter on B. We'll just open that up and let's put a low pass in there. And maybe assign that to the wave folder as well, just to see what happens. Of course, we've got other ones, the function generator. These are sort of modifiable on uh, LFOs, or you've got these standard LFOs as well. Right, so that kind of covers most of the features in Cold Fire. Let's maybe just play around with one more example here. We'll just start a new preset and sort of just add some animation to this little synth loop that we have. Let's put this in serial to start off with. And let's use the wave folder. We'll use the wave folder to add some transients to this. Uh, let's use our function generator. We'll set this to sync at 16th notes and assign that to the wave folder. And let's maybe also just uh, assign a sequencer to get a little bit of more sort of randomization going on there too. So we'll assign a sequencer to the wave folder as well. We can randomize these two. Let's start them down at the bottom and then randomize upwards. So we've got complete random uh, amounts going into that wave folder now. Maybe switch this over to dual fold. Let's see how that sounds. So 
So remember, we're in serial mode now, so this is going to be going into this one. Uh, let's add some filtering to this now on the other side. Let's bring that in and get a filter sweep going with the LFOs. You can switch this over to unipolar or bipolar mode. Also, we could try and see what happens if we put this in parallel. So now we've got our distorted signal over there. And we've got our bandpass filter running in parallel to that now. Let's drive a lot of resonance into this and then select a distortion algorithm to use here. We'll go with the wave shaper maybe. Just our sync on this. And maybe put some feedback into, uh, we'll add a little delay in this case, so we'll go with a quarter note, maybe sync dotted. Let's go with a dotted eighth. And we'll feed B back into the inputs. Change the waveform of this one back to sign two, maybe assign the amount of feedback. And now we can blend back. Let's also try and just drive this less. Our limiter as well. Maybe set up a second sequencer and we'll again randomize this. Set this to eight and maybe assign this one to modulate our mix. Let's set that into bipolar mode again. And we'll bypass it. So that's the original sound. So you have a ton of ton of fun that you can have with this plugin. Uh, really, like a lot of scope going on here. Uh, playing around with the different routing um, and the feedback is a really nice feature as well that I like a lot. But mainly just the amount of uh, tools that you have on hand inside of the different algorithm types here. It really covers a wide range of stuff, uh, right down from very, very subtle. I mean, you could be using this on a mix bus to just generate a little bit of warmth or whatever, uh, right down to completely wrecking your audio signals with wave shaping or bit crushing and so on. It's a really, really nice plugin. I really enjoy this a lot. Uh, we'll be spending a lot of time with this in my own productions as well. So do go check this one out from Arteria if you own VK. Collection 3, it should be added to your bundle as well. Uh, pretty impressed with this one. Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, we'll see you soon right here at Sonic Academy. Until then, take care and cheers. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video, then smash a like. And if you want to be notified about new videos, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. Peace!